Hi, this is Sue and Chris, and we're here today to give you a little overview of the MACD Divergence template that exists in EdgeRater. And the reason that this trading methodology is so appealing to me is because it's very visual. And I find that while it's extremely technical, the visual component of this makes it a lot easier for people to see it and profit from it. The consistency is the other feature that I like about it. And when you get enough of a divergence on the MACD between where price is versus where the MACD says it should be, there is a really consistent tendency for price to pop, either up or down, depending on which way the divergence sets up. It is especially powerful if it's going with overall market direction at the time of the divergence. So if you think about this, you think about a jack-in-the-box, a child's toy. It's build-up pressure, to do to do to do to do 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 pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to frame out two setups here on the IWM, one of my favorite things to trade, and just to see if we can get you so your eye can see what it is we're looking for. So Chris, if you could help me, um, look at the uh, low of the MACD in February right about there, and then slide up, if you would, to the bottom of that candle. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can leave the tail on or take the tail off or split the difference. And if you just slide to the right now, find the next low in the MACD. Okay, so this one is actually a little bit lower, so we're going to anchor from this one instead. Okay, we're going to pick the low of the MACD here. We're going to find the low of that candle and we're going to slide to the right. Now, this time as we slide to the right, I'd like your eye to look down at that MACD. And here we are. We're going to touch the line right now. And do you see that the MACD is higher? Price is the same. In fact, if you really measure it, price is a little bit lower. And the MACD is higher. That's divergence. It's not the lift of the MACD. It's the fact that price is at the same point it was at the low of the MACD, but now the MACD is higher. And now what I'd, I'd like you to do is I'd like you to notice that not only is price retesting that imaginary line that Chris created when he dragged his cursor um, from the low of the MACD on price horizontally, I want you to see the V-shaped configuration that's set up in there. This is a critical element of this trading methodology. Are these repeated V or inverted V-shaped patterns, depending on whether you're topping or bottoming? This is a bottoming pattern, and you'll notice it's an inverted V. It's crisp, uh, price hit that line, bounced up, rejected, was rejected, flushed back down, hits that line again, bounces up, flushes down, is rejected again, and when it throws that hammer down ahead of us right there, that is when you can see the MACD is higher still. Price continually getting lower with these pulsing inverted V-shaped configurations. It's like an EKG machine. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And the rhythm can be staggered, but those V's need to be tight and compressed. The deeper they go, the, whether they're inverted or, or right side up, the deeper they are, the tighter they are, the sharper that um, bounce up, rejection, flush back down. The tighter that is with the MACD building pressure up underneath price in this case, the closer you are to getting a, a real nice opportunity, potentially. I look at the action of the 8 and the 21, those are old standards used by a lot of hedge fund managers and a lot of professional traders still to this day. I look at that as confirmation that yes, not only now is the blue line of the MACD above the red line, but the 8 is turning up, going to slash potentially across that 21. And when it does, now you have the get, get, get set. So it's get ready on the MACD, get set on the 8 and 21. And now what you do is if it crosses the way it did with a gap or a big candle, you just wait. You wait. Because price, it may fly up a couple of candles, but ultimately price will meet back up 
or flag sideways or retrace back into the 8. And we got lucky on this one. It backed all the way into the 21. Now, I want you to stop right there because the way that EdgeRater is going to read this is it's going to give you the get ready, get ready, get ready. There's divergence on the MACD. It's going to give you the perspective when you look at the chart of the 8 and 21 are actually starting to come together and then it actually signals you that it's crossed, that the 8 and the 21 have crossed. Now, what happens next is this is a patience play. You can be an, you know, an, an overly aggressive trader and jump in early, but the patience that a trader can exhibit here is now I want you to look very clearly at the two sets of lines. As price pulled back into that 8 and 21, what happens is the MACD blue line stayed way above the red line. They're spreading apart. And the same thing happens on the 8 and 21. Now your market comes in behind you, preferably you get a nice up day in the market and off you go. That's your entry. Again, if you get the cross with tight price action, you can enter at the cross. If you're an overly aggressive trader and you want to jump in and you just want to put one contract on in paper before the cross even happens and watch it to see if it evolves, that's up to you. But that is the sequence of events that we're looking for. And now very quickly, we're going to flip this over because we're going to follow this trade up. Do they all pay this well? The answer is no, of course not. This was a really, really nice entry on the IWM. But what I want you to see is imagine being able to anticipate these setups coming to you and be able to see them evolve every day when you run the end of day data on EdgeRater and have these the gray lines back in there. I'm going to let Chris explain those when we get up here a little higher on this run coming up into June. So now what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you're trading this all the way up and now how do you decide when it's over? Well, I'm going to go in two different directions here, but I want to stay really focused right here where you're looking at this. You see the spread of the 8 and the 21 continuing. That is a little slower reaction than the MACD. If you look down at the MACD, right where Chris is, dropping down, you'll start to see the MACD is losing energy. Do you see that? The MACD is actually flattening, pulling back. The lines are squeezing together. You're getting a little shovel scoop here, still blue line above red line. It's going to push again. It's going to try, but now the MACD is lower or flat, and price is exceeding. Now the pressure is reversing, folks. This is where it gets really exciting because now you're getting a heads up that, okay, MACD is flat across there. If anything, it might be a little bit lower, but price has exceeded. So now think of it just the opposite of where we got in. The MACD is pushing, pulling price back down. It's saying, no, 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 I'm out of breath. I've got to take a break here. So it's a good place to lock in profits. Plus, you're way up off the eight. A good place to lock in profits is every time price leaps off the eight, you can always re-enter. But now with the MACD, running out of steam, it's a perfect exit. So now, what I want to do is just take a breather here. I want you to look at what's happened now. You've walked right into a V-shaped configuration at the top here. And if you look to the left, you're going to see that the high of the MACD back in March is higher. It's in the orange area than it is over here on the right. And price is continuing to lift above where it was in March. Now, your eye might not catch this, but Chris's software does. And um, Chris, do you wanna, do you wanna just mention the gray line for just a second so people know what that is? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so the gray line is drawn um, it's actually a, it's called a zigzag indicator, and it picks out peaks and troughs. 
um, and it starts to draw a new peak or a new trough after a certain threshold has been met in terms of percentage price move in the stock. So um, it's a it's fairly well known indicator, but the the software uses it in, in a fairly unique way to to try and pick out um, double tops and double bottoms and uh, and divergences. And you can set the the threshold limit to be different values. If you if you set the threshold to be wide, say for instance ten percent then it won't start to draw new peaks and troughs if, if there's uh, um, you know, 4%, 5%, 6% changes like around here. It will actually wait until there's a significant move before it starts to draw a new uh, leg in the, in the zigzag line. So by changing that threshold number to different amounts, you can actually set the sensitivity of this uh, scanner up. Great. Okay, now the reason I had Chris stop just there for one moment is because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you out and we're going to look at the fact that we run this, the way EdgeRater is running this, is we run it on both the daily chart and we can run it on the weekly chart chart. So Chris, could we go to the weekly chart, the first one please, of the IWM at this same top that we're talking about right now. Okay, so I think this one was the week prior to that, and then yes. we'll scroll down one more. And okay, this... perfect. Ooh, that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So what you see here is you can clearly see, um, Chris, can you walk me through the divergence down on that MACD? so that you frame it out for people. Do you see where the price is at its high in March to the left? You'll see that that peak on the MACD is terribly lower than it was in pre preceding um, times. And watch what happens at the next touch of price on that same line. Look at the divergence on the MACD now. Look how low this next peak is. Now, we're still in a position of strength here. So you've got blue lines above red lines spreading. But this is the divergence setting up in advance that you can be watching that we just framed out on that daily chart. So Chris, could you advance now another one for the weekly for me, please? Thanks. OK. You see the big red candle that frames up here at the top? Perfect V-shaped configuration. We love that tight V-shaped configuration on price. That is actually what we are looking for as a perfect setup. Now, do they all turn and make a fortune? The answer is no. It requires the V-shaped configuration on price with a double top or a double bottom. If the, if the second top or bottom is greater it's a stronger pattern. So in other words, if the second touch blasts through the line, the double top or the double bottom, and then reverses, it's even stronger. As long as that MACD divergence stays low like that. So when this sets up, the exciting thing is you see it coming to you long in advance. The EdgeRater software is giving you a heads up days or weeks in advance. And then what you're doing is you're sitting like the croc at the water hole waiting to just reach out and take the trade. So if you could go down through your weeklies now for me, Chris, and then watch how this plays out. And what he's got here in the center is this is the readout showing you how many bars ago on that weekly chart you could have been sitting here waiting for this trade to either confirm or just not come to fruition right and so I on on this the centerpiece you just picked out and talked about this is what you would see if you're looking at edge rater and you run this um, every day and so on this bar it would have actually just picked out and said that um, it looks like there is a potential top coming in there's a divergence when we set the zigzag indicator at, at five percent also at seven also uh, not at 9 because under the divergence column there's a no and uh, not at 12 but these two sensitivities 7% and 5% there is there is a divergence being detected so and it's telling you 
how close price came to the peak and it's telling you what the divergence is in in the MACD so uh, as we go through these charts to the, to the next one and and just so I can jump in really quickly because this is what's so important this is why I got so excited when Chris wanted to do this is because if you look at this you've known for three bars Chris can you show three bars back up on the price for you've known for three bars that this divergence is setting up this is this is three weeks well it started to move the second the 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 second bar but you had a a real heads up that this was potentially coming to you. And I don't think there's any other software out there that can do anything like this. I've looked. I'm, I mean, I've really looked. So you not only see it setting up, but you get a heads up in advance. So if we could just go down through them, and then we're going to go right into the daily, and we're going to watch how this trade actually played out. Because it's really important that you see the advantage here. Okay, now, this is uh, very recent because there's been a retracement. So you had the double top, V-shaped configuration, MACD divergence. You didn't have the blue line on that last rise under the red line on the weekly. But you had enough divergence there that when the daily rolled over, we're going to show you that next, it was just a slam dunk. So now if we go back to the dailies and we'll go down through these, this is what it looked like as the weekly came to fruition. This is, again, blue line above, red line on the MACD. There's your really nice, tight, V-shaped configuration, double top. And here it comes. We're going to go sideways here. Watch the MACD, folks. Watch the MACD. Okay, so what you can see is as this starts to roll over, you're, first of all, you're waiting for it. This is the beauty of this. You're sitting here waiting and watching. So what our um, goal is is to get you at least aware that they're setting up and give you the potential to catch these. So as it rolls over, what you're going to see now is – blue line of the MACD will slide below the red line. It will slash across it. And then you'll see that the eight, the blue line up on the price, has actually started to angle down. Now let's just go down through like three slides and let's just watch it evolve. Big, huge candles. When it goes, it goes. So now blue line is below red line and we're on the MACD and we're about to cross. Yes. And look at it spreading. Isn't that just the loveliest thing on the planet when you want to short something? It's slashed across there with a severe angle down. And then look at the angle coming in on the 8 and the 21. They're right behind it. So now you don't really have an entry right in this candle as the 8 and the 21 are about to cross because you've gapped off the 8 too far. You know that price is going to have to get back to that blue line. So you just give it a moment and lo and behold, it retraces on the next couple of candles. It gives you a chance to slow down and really find a position because now here's, this is now for those of you who are newer traders, this is where this is really helpful because it gives you a pause. You get a chance to look at whether you're going to trade this with options. You know, are you going to trade this with stock? What is the overall market doing? So it works on any um, product you want to trade as far as an option, um, a stock purchase, a leap. So your, your decision now is, okay, let's see what this next candle brings and what is the overall market saying? Do I think, you know, where's support and resistance? So you now get to be a serious trader with a leg up. You've been waiting for it, watching for it, and now you're ready to go. So as it comes down, you've made your decision you're in the trade. You may have several positions on the trade because this has weekly options. So as it comes on down, you're just going to play it out. Now, how do you know when it's, the movement might be over? Well, first of all, you're watching the price jump off the eight. You know that that's not going to last for long. It'll flag eventually or retrace. There's your retracement. But the blue lines and red lines are all still spreading. No, nothing's really turning up at a severe angle. And the MACD is still saying down. Do 
you see the angle on that blue line and red line? It's still saying there's more to go. First dog leg, there's your first dog leg. Let's keep running down through, oops, okay. Now the dog leg is holding. So let's see what happens as price comes back to the eight. Is it going to roll again? Price goes to the 21, moment of truth, here it goes. And look at your MACD. It's going to angle apart, it's going to bend down, and down she goes. Now, as this comes down, this is one or two flags, and really you want to start thinking about taking some profits. If you haven't already started to lock your trades in, now you're watching for momentum to come out of the MACD. And at that point in time, you're done. It's a good place to lock it in. It's a good place to take profits. Okay? So that now it's going sideways, and you're for sure out. There's no, there's no heroes, heroism here, depending on what you're trading. If you're an options trader, fate is killing you. If you're a stock trader, you get to pick whether you, you stay or go. Okay? Now, one more thing I want to address while we're talking about this is if you want to keep going, Chris, you can see the dog leg forming on the MACD. And, and that's just, you know, it's over. It's over. These big bulges on the MACD, when they dog leg like that, you really want to take profits. So the reason the, the charts for this template are so clean is because we really want you to be able to see the price versus the angle of the MACD. And what you're going to notice is, Chris, can you go back to um, the low hammer candle in the center of the screen where we started to get an indication of, this chart's fine, um, where we started to get an indication that this, uh, to the left, right above May 19th. So right in there. What I want you to see is, do you see that the MACD now is at the same point it was on that candle? just about. I usually will look at that and think to myself as that dog leg starts to form that the MACD has come back home. It's come back to where I took, I had an interest in going long the trade. Very often you'll see this happen and it's a good place to really seriously consider getting out. Make sense? It's hit its, hit its home, home base. This is where it first told me I was probably going to go long and this is a great place for me to get out. So we keep the charts really clean without a lot of indicators here so that when you're in these trades, you actually can see these divergences. You can see where that MACD is coming home to roost. You know, where is it historically? It's right back at the base it established back in February. It's real close to its home base. It's in a uh, tight range down there. So the likelihood of it turning are, pre you know, pretty strong. So that's basically how we use MACD divergence to trade. And I'm going to see if Chris has anything he wants to ask me before I stop the training video. So what we've done is we've looked at a double bottom. We've looked at it right there in the center of April. It's set up perfectly with massive, you know, massive tight V in there coming down into a lower price with MACD going up. That's the reversal of the double bottom. And actually this is one where price exceeded the prior low. I love those. And then we did a double top with a much bigger V across there. And there's the roll over and the down. Now some entities, some tickers will set up and they will pattern trade um, very nicely. You could look at this and someone who's a support and resistance trader could say, well, this is one big wide channel trade. And what we're doing is reading the MACD divergence to assist us in going back and forth across that channel. I would say yes to all of the above. But the beauty of it is you don't have to have a lot of technical background to become a technical trader using MACD divergence. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say because it's come to a um, potential turning point here, would, would this be another potential yes. divergence for an entry long? Yes. Actually, as we watch this set up, it won't refer back to May 19th because if you look back to May 19th, there's not enough divergence, um, a little bit more to the center, right, right in there. There's not enough divergence in that MACD. The divergence now, the MACD says price actually should have come lower. So if you're reading the horizontal line, MACD is back to where it was on the 19th when price was lower. So now what we're going to do is we're going to watch this to see if this is going to be a retracement that lifts up maybe 50%. 
And actually, I think as of today, when we get to the live charts, I think it is at about a 50% retracement. So what we'll do now is see if this is going to be a retracement you know, and, and, and you don't have to use technicals. You can just eyeball it. If this is going to lift 50% of the way and then possibly go sideways and maybe roll back down again. We won't know until we see this set up. But Edge Raider will give us a leg up. Edge Raider will help us determine whether or not there's a divergence building back in. So we can be um, a little bit less... Um, attentive with Edge Raider. If you don't have Edge Raider, then you would be looking and looking and looking and looking and studying and measuring. And Edge Raider does that for you. Okay? So I think this concludes the training part. And again, if you have any questions about the divergence and the V-shaped configurations, um, you can get in touch with me through Chris. Contact me through uh, my, the uh, support page on the website. And yes. uh, I can forward any uh, emails to, to uh, Sue. And one, I will add one more thing. For those, just to make it clear why we run both the weekly chart and the daily chart, because I think this is critical. The reason that we run both of those is you can trade this on a daily chart, but the, the mother load is when it sets up a clear, precise, V-shaped configuration with divergence on the MACD on that weekly chart. That's where the power is. The higher the time frame and the stronger the pattern on that higher time frame, the more likely you're going to have a chance to make some really, really big moves and some really nice money. Trading just the daily is fine. Getting those weekly patterns, oh, wow. You get five or six of those a year, and it just, it just makes your year so easy. And to my way of thinking, um, you know, not being a, an expert at this system as you are, when I saw the, the weekly charts, it, it just seemed a lot more obvious than on the daily charts. So going back to the first, the first week, you can see the divergence is much, much clearer here. Yes. This, in this V-shape configuration you've got, you know, the MACD difference is, is actually quite a lot. Yes. So I think <laughs> I think that makes a good a good heads up to then start monitoring this on the daily chart. Right. And there was one before and I I the way you're set up it's it's not really fair to your software, but the one before also to the left that was in January to March, you'll see down on the MACD you could have entered that easily to the short side as well. The, this one sure eye is trained and Edge Raider will help do that. This without a tool uh, training your eyes a little bit lengthier process. When you have the help of the software, it will pick these up and then you look down and you see, oh my gosh, look at the divergence on the MACD, blue line below red line, I better get ready, just in case. That's the get ready. And then all of a sudden you see the, 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 the red candle and then, you know, the flagging sideways. So that's, and then the 8 and 21 on the daily will start to kick in and then that's the get, you know, get set then all you're waiting for is to go or don't go. So it really um, makes this trading methodology, I think, accessible to just about any level of trader. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Sue. And we're now going to do another video on the use of the software, how you would run the software to find the signals and find the stocks that are exhibiting MACD divergences. And we're also gonna take a look at some of the stocks that are cropping up today. And Sue's gonna go through and explain what she sees in each of those stocks. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.